Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we are on to pseudoscientist number seven. In today's one, I'm actually not sure if they're a flat earther. I say this because I've seen one flat earth video that was supposedly by them, but nothing else. And it is impossible to check if they've made more, because their channel was deleted for hate speech. But fear not, they upload videos to Rumble, so we can still take a look at them. Although, there's no Flat Earth videos on their Rumble. Now, who am I talking about? Well, it is someone called Svithri Rig. Now, I'm sure people will come along and tell me that it's actually pronounced Sverage or something like that. But, he has a number in his name, so it's Svithri Rig. Now, most of his content is anti-vegan. And I'm not talking about making fun of annoying vegans or anything like that. No, I mean saying that veganism is bad. Now, I have a hot take, and this hot take may potentially get me cancelled. I think that being anti-vegan is actually kind of cringe. Yes, there are annoying vegans out there. But it would be like being anti-bodybuilding because gym bros are annoying. Now, I personally am not a vegan, nor am I a vegetarian, but I do think that vegans get a very disproportionate amount of hate. Anyway, that's my hot take on veganism, seeing as I brought veganism up. Let's see what Svithri Rig has to say about... Oh no, Agenda 21. Hi everyone. The destruction of families is part of the depopulation plan. Nowadays, feminists, for the most part, talk down to men, and men going their own way, for the most part, talk down to women. Both of these movements were created by the government to separate us. That's right, feminism was created by the government. Because it can't be that there are issues that women face that they want to be resolved. No, 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 no. It has to be the government's doing. And the same goes for men that are going their own way. It can't be that there are guys that have just given up on dating because they can't get laid. No, 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 no. That's got to be the government's fault too. You know, maybe it's that society has problems because we're all human, and some people try to solve these problems, and then some people just completely give up on these problems. Of course, there are things that the government could try to do to fix some of the problems in the world, but people aren't going to vote for politicians based on that because they're more concerned about culture war stuff. They call each other crazy without realizing that everybody is going nuts because of plant-based diets. I don't think that plant-based diets are making people go crazy or anything. In fact, I think that most people wouldn't even have what would be considered a plant-based diet. Although maybe he considers a balanced diet as being a plant-based diet. These people hardly ever have children, but even if they did, how could they have an actual natural family where children feel well? <laughs> you know, having children is expensive, so the rational thing to do is to wait until you're financially stable in order to have kids. In this day and age, that can take years to happen. We've all seen the films where the kid turns 18 and goes to college. I don't really think I have. The first thing that comes to mind is High School Musical, but it's been years since I've seen that. Usually far away because it's in a city. That's how the government tries to separate you. Okay, so here's a bit of a secret that I'm going to tell everyone. So the reason why colleges and universities are in cities is because there's a lot of people there. They're not going to build a college or a university, you know, all the way up in the mountains or something where no one lives because no one would go there. Instead, they're built in places that are more convenient for a lot of people. But even if it's not far away, they will still leave their parents simply because it's not cool to be with the human beings who created you. What are you talking about? I know plenty of people that live closely to where their parents live. Some people even live with their parents. Yes, a lot of people do move out of their parents' house shortly after they turn 18, but that's because there's a negative stereotype of living with your parents. Living near your parents, on the other hand, people don't see a problem with that at all. You're shopping for clothes with your mother? Totally uncool, bro. You're an adult now, so act like it. I literally know someone who told me that they were shopping for clothes with their mother, like, only a few weeks ago. I think that a large reason why a lot of people don't shop for clothes with their mother is because, well, it is something that is better done with friends. Your friends are definitely more likely to pick out something that looks better on you than your mama's. All of this comes from Hollywood. Their job is to program you. Then do children leave their parents in nature? Never. Except for, you know, all the times that that happens, like with 
birds and lizards and snakes. Natural healthy humans live to at least 150. Oh my bad, he's obviously just bullshitting. I should have known. And they live together with their children who are around 135, their grandchildren and their children and so on. Okay, I could not imagine living with my parents until 135. Jeez, you know how often I'd keep them up when recording these videos? Nowadays some people don't even get to see their grandchildren because we have children way too late and die way too early. Well, life expectancy is going up. But as I mentioned earlier, people like to be financially stable before having children and sometimes that can take a while, especially in this current day and age. The way siblings are portrayed in Hollywood is as if they never get along and always fight. As someone who has a sibling, yeah, we fight a lot. That is just something that siblings do. Yes, we do get along, but we also do fight. Spending time with your brother or sister is of course also not cool and you want to be cool because you want to fit in. You don't want to be warm and connect to others. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Sometimes you are seen as uncool if you hang out with your siblings, but sometimes you're seen as cool if you hang out with your siblings. It usually depends on whether your friends think your siblings are cool or not. Of course, they also made it economically hard to have children and as I said in my depopulation video, the infertility rates are at an all-time high. Well, fertility rates are actually on the decline and they have been declining for a while. Or maybe you don't know what fertility rates are. The fertility rate is essentially the average number of children that you'd expect to see a woman have in their life. I'm guessing he thinks that it has something to do with how breedable people are. Not having a family is why you will feel unfulfilled at the end of your life. Well, some people might feel unfulfilled by not having a family, but there are certainly people out there that don't want a family. Because it means that you failed. Your blood, which is your soul, is going to die with you. Well, that's something new. Your blood is your soul. So does that mean that when my doctors took my blood out of me, that they are taking my soul? Is that why vampires need to drink blood? Because they have no soul? Now that you're cool, you move to a city, which are all essentially giant growing tumors. Well, as someone who lives in a city, I think that cities are pretty neat. There are a lot of people here. There are lots of communities and there's lots of different events that are happening. I think that's pretty cool. You may be able to go on holidays sometimes, but the rest of the time, you're going to stay in your prison cell and go to school or work. Because you need money to survive and work is probably the most reliable way to get money. It would be nice if it were different, but there are jobs that do need to be done. They want you far away from nature and farms. That way they will be able to control what you eat. You know, lately there has been a push for cities to adopt more nature. This means more trees on city streets, especially in urban areas. But even if you could find healthy food in a city, which is not going to last, then you would still end up dying prematurely because of the pollution. Yes, pollution is definitely a big issue for some cities, especially in the US. But do you want to know what creates more pollution? People living far apart from one another. If you can't walk to your friend's place or a grocery store and there are no good public transit options, then you are forced to take a car. As it turns out, if everyone's driving everywhere, then there's going to be more pollution. City people are depressed because every day of their life is filled with unnatural food and work. So I understand how work can make you depressed, but jobs need to be done by people. If nobody works, then nobody gets to eat because farming is not done automatically. And also, I don't necessarily see how unnatural food will make you depressed. I can understand how having a bad diet could do that, but me eating pizza from time to time does not make me depressed. Cities were designed to make you miserable, especially the ones in the United States because you can walk for hours there <laughs> and only find fast food. Now I do agree with him a little bit there because there are way too many fast food places in America. You could walk 20 minutes to a Walgreens and pass at least 10 fast food places. But I don't think cities are intentionally designed to make you depressed. Negative health consequences just so happen to be one of the side effects of how we have designed cities. I don't think having to drive to work for an hour and then having to drive back for an hour would be good for your mental health. We don't have that because someone decided, oh, how good it would be if everyone were depressed 
from having to drive to work every day. No, it happened because the dream was that everyone should have their own standalone single family house. And the only way that you can achieve that is by having everything spread out, which means that it's going to take a while to drive to work. There is a reason why there has been a huge push lately for high density housing. I recommend to everybody to get the hell out of cities if you have the chance. Well, not everyone can because cities are where jobs are. Cities are where friends are. Cities can be where family is. You can't expect everyone to just throw that kind of stuff away. New York City, as an example, is a cesspit. You will most likely never get to see the sunrise or the sunset. Not that the people there care, because they don't even notice the constant chem clouds in the sky. Wait, is he talking about pollution there or chemtrails? Because it's very hard to tell with this kind of person. Also, it's not necessarily important to see a sunset or sunrise. I don't know if I have ever seen a sunrise, but that's just simply because I really have no interest in doing so. And also, if you live in a valley, then you wouldn't see a sunset or sunrise because you have mountains blocking your views. Are we going to tell people to get out of valleys now? They are materialistic and obsessed with how they look like. You know, there are people out there that like to look good and dress in nice clothing. You know, that is actually something that can help your mental health. It's pretty much a big mental asylum, and I'm not joking or overreacting. You can even get your meds at any corner, and most of them do. So there's nothing wrong with having to take medication. Hell, I'd like to take medication for my ADHD. Going outside isn't going to fix it because all the squirrels will distract me. Humans are afraid that nature will take over if we stop cutting down the grass, bushes and trees in cities. So generally the reason why things like trees are cut down in cities is to make way for things being built. You can't really build a house if there's a whole lot of trees where you want to build it. There are also other reasons why people cut down trees, like sometimes trees just don't have the look that you're going for, so you might cut them down. It's not because we're scared of nature or anything. In fact, a lot of people quite like nature. All that they know is enslavement, which is why they would die in nature just like the zoo animals. Thank you for watching. You know, he talks about people in cities like they're enslaved, but I actually feel far freer in a city than I would in a small town. And that's because it gives me more to do, and things are closer here. Yes, there can be benefits to small towns. I myself prefer to be in a bigger city though. Well, provided that the city is well designed, of course. Anyway, that was 3 Rig talking about Agenda 21, at least that was the title of the video. I really don't get the logic of all his conspiracy theories. I mean, why would people want you to be depressed? That means lower production, and that's not good for capitalism. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. And join us tomorrow for a flat earther who thinks that they're really good at maths until it gets to geometry. And they also think that 1 plus 1 equals 1. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Jet Alone, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Wolfie, Mori, Grandma Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcher Campbell, Kitten McKitten from Kitten Town, Craig D'Amelio, Nerthan Thompson, and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.